The line between smartphones and phablets is getting a little blurry, but there's still a pretty wide gulf between Samsung's latest in each category. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is Samsung Galaxy S4 versus Samsung Galaxy Note 2. It used to be that any smartphone with a screen creeping into 5-inch territory would be considered a phablet, a hybrid phone and tablet. Well, that all changed late last year with the arrival of HTC's Droid DNA, which showed us that a 5-inch display could be crammed into a narrow chassis that's more phone than tablet. And the Samsung Galaxy S4 is the ultimate embodiment of that truth. Its narrow bezels, thin body, and light weight make it much more portable than the beefier Note series. But Samsung has lifted some features from the Note line and ported them to the new Galaxy S, so the waters get a little muddier here. Let's compare these devices in four main areas. Hardware, UI, camera, and some test notes. Side by side, it doesn't seem like these devices would have much in common. The Note 2 is a genuine monster next to the Svelte S4, almost two millimeters thicker and larger in every other dimension as well. But there are some commonalities under the hood here. Both the Note 2 and our American GS4 run on quad-core processors backed up by two gigs of RAM. On the Note 2, it's a Samsung Exynos 4412 running at 1.6 gigahertz, and on the Galaxy S4, it's a Snapdragon 600 at 1.9 gigahertz. Both devices are offered in multiple storage options with micro SD expansion, and both feature removable batteries. But the Note 2's 3100 milliamp hour pack is 500 milliamp hours larger than the Galaxy S4's. The biggest factor driving the Note 2's beefier dimensions is the Super AMOLED display, which at 5.5 inches is a full half inch larger diagonally than the Galaxy S4's. It's also lower in resolution at 720p, putting out a pixel density of 267 ppi. That's nowhere close to the sharpness of the S4's 1080p 441 ppi Super AMOLED panel, but the Note 2 screen still provides wonderfully rich colors, deep blacks, and more than enough sharpness for the average user. And the added acreage is a big advantage to those who just want more screen. Still, whites appear a bit more green on the Note 2, and the difference in sharpness is detectable on text-heavy pages, so the S4 will still be the preferred choice for display purists. In the hand, the difference between the 182-gram Note 2 and the 130-gram Galaxy S4 is night and day. While they're both finished in the same glossy hyperglaze with similar texturing patterns underneath, the size and weight disparity makes you keenly aware that one of these is a smartphone and the other is something more. That's reinforced by the presence of the S Pen on the Note 2, which takes us into software and UI. The Note 2 relies heavily on its S Pen stylus to set it apart from the Galaxy S line. In our full review of the Note 2, we said it makes using the device feel akin to using a desktop computer in some cases, in part because of the air view, hovering and scrolling functionality. There's also the Wacom digitizer in the Note 2's display, which registers over a thousand levels of pressure sensitivity for the art making and note taking functionality that gives the device its name. The S Pen is so central to the concept of the Note 2 that Samsung has released an SDK for the stylus to allow developers to create apps that leverage its unique capabilities. Now, Samsung has ported some of those S Pen features to the Galaxy S4 without also bringing along the S Pen. Specifically, it's introduced AirView to the S4, allowing a user to hover with his or her finger over the display to initiate different actions than a tap. Now, while this is a handy idea, it somehow feels less natural with a thumb than with a stylus. It's also only a partial replication. Scrolling doesn't function on the S4 as it does on the Note 2, and some of the bugs have made their way from the previous incarnation as well. This is evident in the messaging app, where only some message threads provide previews on hover, seemingly at random. It's still handy in places like the gallery, in the custom-built Flipboard app, in the dialer, and elsewhere. And with a software update to fix the bugs, it could really enhance the experience of using the S4, but in its current form, it's much less useful here than on the Note 2. And new but similar features like air gesture suffer the same fate. Elsewhere, the interface is quite familiar. Even though our AT&T Note 2 here is running Android 4.1.2, while our Sprint GS4 is running 4.2.2. While the newer version of Android offers some goodies like lock screen widgets on the newer phone, Samsung's TouchWiz skin hasn't changed much across these devices. The only notable enhancements come in mild tweaks, like the notification shades toggles and the reformatted settings menu, 
along with new features like Group Play and Watch On, Samsung's Peel-powered home media hub. Here, the Galaxy S4 stands out by virtue of its home entertainment system controlling IR Blaster, something not included on the older Note 2's hardware. So if using your phone as a remote control for your home media sounds compelling, well, the GS4 is the clear choice. Otherwise, we're looking at a very similar user experience. App launch times are comparable across both stock and third-party apps, and the experience is mostly snappy, with only occasional stumbles and lags. You could make the argument that software running on hardware this powerful has no business lagging at all, but the extent and frequency of that lag are minimal enough to only bother hardcore performance enthusiasts. If you're happy with TouchWiz, you'll be pleased. If you're tired of its cartoony look, you won't find any relief in the brand new Galaxy S4. The UI was given a slight overhaul in terms of the camera viewfinder, though. Samsung has swapped out the older, lifeless list approach from the Note 2 with the larger, easier-to-use ribbon from the Galaxy camera. There are also many more fun features here, like the multiple exposure drama shot, the GIF-making animated photo, the two-camera dual shot, and so on. The Note 2 isn't exactly lacking for features, but the GS4 definitely takes gimmicks to the next level. There's also been a resolution bump in the S4 to 13 megapixels over the Note 2's 8 megapixel sensor, though it should be noted that the S4's out-of-box setting is 9.6 megapixels, presumably to ensure a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. In this shooting mode, the field of view is narrower than the Note 2's, meaning you need to get further from your subject to capture it. That's annoying, but at least it results in shots that are comparatively sharper most of the time. For most consumers, though, the most visible improvements in the Galaxy S4 camera over the Galaxy Note 2 will be the added features, not the improved picture quality. Samsung has had a pretty good reputation for battery endurance since at least the Galaxy S3, and neither the Note 2 nor the Galaxy S4 seem eager to break that record. That's a good thing. During our testing in the greater Boston area, stamina was solid on the new S4, the device lasting us a full day of moderate to heavy use. The Note 2, with its huge 3100mAh cell, still outclasses it, but not by as much as you'd think. We have more thoughts on the Galaxy S4's battery life in the full review. Some cues the Galaxy S4 took from the Note 2 resulted in substantially identical performance. Enlarging the speaker and moving it down to the lower left, as on the larger phablet, resulted in much improved sound over earlier models. These devices produce very similar audio results, with maybe just a hair more bass on the Note 2. Speakerphone performance in phone calls is fine on both, but several callers told us that regular calls taken through the earpiece sound better on the Note 2, with the Galaxy S4 producing a muddier sound. And callers also sounded a bit tinnier on our end with the S4 as compared to the Note 2. We're not sure if that's a result of hardware or software, or if it's correctable, but it is a little disappointing. In some Though Samsung brought some features over from the Note family for its latest Galaxy S offering, these two smartphones are still a category apart. The Note, with its larger screen, S Pen, more refined feature set, better call quality, and superior battery life, is still the go-to choice for someone who needs more than a typical smartphone experience. The Galaxy S4 is more pocketable, with a much sharper screen and some newer features. It does the Galaxy S line proud but it doesn't infringe on the phablet territory of its larger cousin. Despite some feature bleed, Samsung has succeeded in keeping these product lines separate, each one useful in its own particular way. Folks, we have so much more on the Galaxy S4, both here on YouTube and at pocketnow.com. Make sure and subscribe, follow us on social media, drop us a like here on YouTube if you enjoyed the video, leave a comment down below if you have something to say, and as always, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.